I love the Lord with all my heart. I haven't sang this in a while. I, I was kind of hesitating whether to sing it or not because I haven't played it. And I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I've been singing it all afternoon, so. You're among friends. It's all right. Yeah.
from the depths of my heart. <laughs> We've been working all day trying to get ready. Al's uh, going to be here Tuesday. He's hoping yeah, to be here he Tuesday evening. Yes, he called. I'll be leaving Wednesday, so we've been trying to get things taken care of. Get some things done. So pardon my appearance. We did not, before I knew it, it was six o'clock. I said, we got to go. <laughs> um, we request a prayer for you, Brother Pat did. Well, we'll take all the prayer we can get. Well, I'm going to go bring you at you. you know. and Donna's on call this weekend, so yeah. if she gets a call, then she's got to take it. i got to go out and work. Sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Port What's wrong with my children? And why won't they praise me? Am I not the king of kings? Am I not their Lord of lords? What's wrong with my children?
beautiful song. Yes. True song. <coughs> Absolutely. Okay. What do we do, ladies? Oh, in, in G, what do we do? Here? Mm -hmm.
I'm going to change the tempo a little bit, and uh, that was good. Thank you. That was just good. This has been on my heart all week. I've sung it Tuesday night, too, but it's been on my heart all week. <laughs> How many is desire is it tonight to please Jesus? Amen. Yes, it is. I'm going to do that again. Amen. Amen. That's better. We had about half of them. Getting lazy, Zion. Get them hands up. I'll tell you what, if a man can just take a 44 in your face. You'll surrender this. What you want? What you want? Take it all. Take it all. That's yeah. what you take. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll take it and shoot you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, give me a G chord. <laughs> and if, if you like this song, sing it with me. Uh, it is, it is uh, the desire of my heart to please it. It's my desire.
this song, but it's talking about the Methodist Church, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, you'd be surprised what's going on at that Methodist Church. I mean, worship begin to come in that church in, in lots of different ways. I talk to Ron Bell all the time, and I, I really love Ron, and he, he loves me, and he, he, he tells me what's going on. And Brother uh, Suter is a pastor there. He, I mean, he's a man of God, let me tell you now. And his wife is a, she can speak, she's a preacher, she's really something. And I'll tell you, God can work wherever He wants to work. And I say, work on, Lord. I'd like to see him just blow that place apart. <laughs> I really would. Because there's a lot of good people that's worked for God for years and years and years. Amen. So I'm going to sing a few verses of this song tonight. Don't blame it on me.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Amen. These two verses are what the message is based on tonight. The victory is in Jesus. Yes, um, Psalm 23.6, David said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy. Goodness, the goodness of God gives us the things that we don't deserve, and the mercy of God spares us from the things that we do deserve. You know, I, 
I, it just dawned on me a couple, uh, a few days ago that I never really testified fully about what he set me free from when when he saved me. It was just uh, two years ago, right down here at the Full Gospel Church, just down the road. I, I'd been to the, I'd been to a couple churches a couple times before I got saved, and I even I even went to the altar. One day, uh, I went on a, on an Easter Sunday. I went to church with my mom down in Arkansas, and uh, I went to the altar. But it was me and my daughter back there, Jackie. And but I, Jesus got a hold of me, but I didn't get a hold of him that day. You know, I I still had, I was still full of doubt, and uh, I just wasn't ready to surrender my life to him. You know, and and that's what it takes. You have to you have to be real willing to surrender to get the victory. So uh, there went some time. That was probably about seven years ago. I, I, I had about five years there that God was dealing with me all the time. You know, but I was still running, and. Uh, then uh, I I don't know if uh, probably probably all of you know or not, but when I was a teenager, I was 13 years old. <coughs> when my my dad my dad put a gun to his head and ended his life. And uh, this happened on. Uh, my cousin Donnie's birthday, and uh, that that spirit of suicide attached itself to me, my brothers, my cousin Donnie, and uh, I mean, I could just go on and on and tell you the stories about all the suicidal things that we did, and uh, and I know now, every, every one of us are in church now, and I know that it was God that kept us alive, sure. yeah. because I, I stood when I was 16 years old and let my brother shoot a cigarette out of my mouth with a 22 rifle. And, and he had no problems about doing it because if he'd have killed me, he'd have just turned the gun on himself. He did. We just didn't care, brother Pat. We, I mean, it was that spirit of suicide that was on us. And, and I saw, I saw my cousin Donnie pick up a rifle off of my uncle's gun rack that was always loaded and put it to his head and pull the trigger. And and it just wasn't loaded that day. And though, I mean, like I said, I could just go on and on and tell you about those kind of things, but. Still, all that, all those years, that was uh, that was like 34 years after my dad committed suicide that before I got saved. And all those years, Satan was trying to get me to kill myself all all that time, you know. And uh, finally, uh, you know, I didn't get a hold of Jesus that one day because you can throw a seed on the ground and and it might grow a little bit, but it it'll dry up, you know, because it's not down there getting. But but then. One one day, our family got a report that my oh, hallelujah, my my oldest daughter had a brain tumor. I just watched my uncle die from brain cancer, and I just couldn't stand it. You know, I couldn't think about that happening. And uh, I was just broken, brother Pat. I mean, I was broken. I come I come to church and when that. When that ground's broken, that seed can get down in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to that altar. I, well, I didn't even come to the altar. I was sitting back there in the back, and, and somebody came and got me. And I don't even know who it was. I couldn't even tell you. I was just the whole service. I was sitting back there just crying. And and I think it was probably my older brother Tony that came and got me, but I'm not even sure. And I came to that altar, and when I knelt down there. I mean, it was surrendered, didn't you? Yeah. It was it was unbelievable what happened. You know, that spirit of suicide departed from me right then. Hallelujah. And that Jesus came into my heart, and I've never been the same since. And it was unbelievable. But hallelujah. Uh, I better get into this word. We're getting kind of That's good, brother. That's meat for our soul. Let me say this before I get started. This is real important now. Listen close. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> that wouldn't be suicide. That'd be murder. <laughs> I don't want to die now. That's where suicide's gone. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> 
I just got to be obedient to God. Uh, the, uh, I, I've been told that, this, this was just two years ago that I got saved down here. And I've been told that I haven't been saved long enough to be preaching. But, you know, that's a, that's a perfectly logical thing to say, natural thing to say, but we're not dealing with a logical God or a natural God. We're dealing with a supernatural yes, God. Sir. You know? And he got the Apostle Paul ready to preach the gospel just three days after he met up with Jesus on the road to Damascus. That's the truth. You know, so if he can do that, he can, he can get me ready, you know. And uh, I believe, uh, well, I don't have any confidence in myself. It's all confidence in him. But I believe the way Sister Jennifer does. I'm just foolish enough to believe that with God, all things are all possible. All things are possible. So, uh, the, the thing I'm wanting to do tonight is to try to try to set someone free, you know, let them be able to draw near to God with, in full assurance with a true heart, you know, that, that they'll know they'll know God deeper, you know, yes. and, and, and to cast out those spirits that bind us. And Brother Tony's going to help me here in a little while with a, a skit, and uh, then there's going to be some fireworks afterwards, so don't leave early now. <laughs> Uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. <laughs> said before, the victory is in Jesus. And the victory in you is Him in you. You there? Yes. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. In the faith is in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So that's Amen. that's how you know that you're in Christ. You know that, that when you have that real Jesus experience I was talking about. And I got to get my glasses on. I can't see it. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Now look at what Paul said in the next verse. But I trust that ye, all, ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Um, a reprobate is defined as morally unprincipled, condemned by God. So, if Jesus Christ is not in you, you're condemned by God. That's what that's saying. You're a reprobate. Do you think that the devil would like to convince God's children that they are reprobates, condemned oh, yes, by absolutely. God? Absolutely. I mean, he would love to do that. Yes, sir. The Apostle Paul said, Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let him be a curse. And he's right. the one that he's the one that preached this right here. That's right. That Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. And he also preached in Romans 8, verse 8 and 9. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Not of him. In verse 14 he said, For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So can we be saved without Jesus in us? No. Can't be done. This is why he said in John 3, 5, Verily, verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. Then he said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. There's no in-between. Amen. There's no gray area. We are either of God or not of God, saved or not saved, born of the Spirit or not born of the Spirit. John 3.18 said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is why Ephesians 3.17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. 
And in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, Paul said that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And maybe this is why Paul said in Romans 15, 16, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. You're not saved if you're not sanctified. I know some of you are probably sitting out there thinking, man, there's no way I'd get up in a Pentecost church and preach this message. Well, that's why he didn't give it to you. <laughs> God's word is true. It's written in there. You know, it's, it's all written. saying that. It's written. And uh, <laughs> that the reason I'm bringing this message is I'm really getting tired of seeing my brothers and sisters fall away in perdition. Because they don't know that they have the power in them to defeat the devil. Think about it. Amen. You know, we, we have got to know that that power is in us before we can believe that we can use it. Amen. There's only, that's the only way it can happen. 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Given us to us of God. Romans 8.16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This is, right here, is how I knew that there was something very wrong going on before I even knew what the scripture said. You know, I, I knew as soon as I left that altar that that God was in me. I mean, uh, I've heard Brother Pat say many times that, that it all takes place right there in that water. You know? But I believe there's times when it can happen before you get there. Because Absolutely. Sure. It did for me. I know. I know it did. But I, I'm not saying you shouldn't be baptized. I'm saying you should. You definitely should. Yeah. Well, I want to give you something to think about. Would you send your children out into the world where you know they have an enemy that wants to steal them away from you, kill them, and destroy their soul without giving them everything in your power to protect them? You wouldn't do that. No. Well, God wouldn't do that either. No, He wouldn't. That's right. Ephesians three sixteen says that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Yes. This is where our power comes from. Amen. Strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner in man. The inner man. This is what it's like. This is what it's like that when I hear this stuff. It's like. What Jesus said, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, you shall guide yourself into all truth. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. Did he? No. <laughs> he, said, he said, the spirit will guide, guide you into you all, all truth. You can't, you can't do it on your own. No, That's you right. can't. no way. The, all, I'm, all I'm trying to do is take the power away from the enemy and give it back to us. Amen. You know, I'm not coming against anybody. If you don't agree with me in any of this, I still love you. Amen. All I ask is you do the same for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you have that power Hallelujah. in you. Amen. Overcome. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, We've got the power. We sing the song. It's, it's, all, it's all about the love. Amen. Romans 5, 5 says, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy How Ghost. in the world could you show the love of God to anybody if you didn't have the Holy That's Ghost? Right. It's impossible. <laughs> Go to uh, 1 John chapter 5. I'm throwing my notes away. I'm just going to follow the leading of the Spirit. <laughs> 1 John chapter 5. Verse 1 says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that be God loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Verse 5. Here, I'm going to show you the overcoming power that we have. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. The, the, the scripture also says that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of our testimony. And it says here that we overcome the world because we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So what is our 
overcoming testimony. That's right. Go to uh, back up there to chapter 4, verse 4. Good job. Okay, we already read that whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Verse 4 here says, Ye are of God, little children. That's whosoever believeth. And, and have overcome them. This is talking about the spirit of Antichrist, the world. Yeah. And have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, Amen. So how would God, how would he dwell in you? He that is greater than he that is in the world, how would he dwell in you? It said, it said back there, who, who overcomes? He that believeth on the Son of God. So how would he dwell in you? By faith. Go to uh, verse 12 in the same chapter. As you read through here, this is the love chapter I call it. It says, it tells you that he that, he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. It tells you in back to back verses that God is love and love is God. Okay, verse 12 says, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. Now this is the Bible telling you exactly what the evidence of the Holy Ghost is. It says, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And like I said, Romans 5, 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So this is telling you exactly what the evidence of the Holy Ghost is. Now, let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm, I'm cutting through and making it as fast as I can. Ephesians <coughs> chapter 4, verse 4. I want to point something out here before I read these, there's these three verses. Check, uh, verse 4 through 6. Punctuation is very important in the Bible. Amen. And I've seen... Uh, a lot of the new Bibles is changing that punctuation, but it actually changes the meaning of Scripture when you do that. Because if you see here, you see here there's a semicolon at the end of verse four, there's a comma at the end of verse five, and the period doesn't come till the end of verse six. That lets us know that all three of those verses are just like one verse. All this information is tied together. There is one body and one spirit, with a capital S. The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, same Spirit, right, Brother Pat? Amen. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Remember that. This is very important. One baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In you all, said. Verse 13. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body. For, for by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. Now, if there's only... One spirit, one body, one baptism. Doesn't that have to be the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Yeah. Amen. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So when would it happen? When you enter into the body of Christ. <coughs> Is that the word of God? Amen. Amen. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. I'll show you what that means here in a little bit. Look at verse 3. 
Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. I, I really don't know how it can get any clearer than that. Amen. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Go down to verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I brought this out before that the gifts of the Spirit... The gift of the Holy Ghost is promised to all believers. The gifts of the Holy Ghost are not promised to each individual. They are, well, I'll show you here in just a second. They are divided by God to profit the whole body. It says, if you've got a gift, that's my gift. If I've got a gift, that's your gift. Because we are all one in Christ Jesus. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And then it lists all the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not going to take time to read them all. But if you look at verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit. Same Spirit. It, that, that means that if you're of faith, you, you have the same Spirit as anybody else in the body. Okay, look at verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. It's... It's his choice where those gifts go. But it doesn't matter which one of those gifts you have, you're still baptized with the same Spirit as anybody else. Okay, go to John chapter 1. I'm cutting through it just as quick as I can. This is all for the perfecting of the saints, the gifts of the, the gifts of the Spirit. That's what that's for. I'm going to show you here. Verse 12, John chapter 1. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What would that power be that's given to become the sons of God? And the Holy Ghost. Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. They were all born of God, born of water and of the Spirit. The next two verses tells us about Jesus. Now look at what verse 16 says. And His fullness have all we received and grace for grace. You can say that frontward or backward, it means the same thing. His grace have all we received and His fullness. They go together. They can't be separated. Now I want to show you with the Scripture why they had to tarry for the Holy Ghost the day of Pentecost. John chapter 7. We no longer have to tarry, folks. It's, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost is, is the gift of the Holy Ghost. We don't work for that. We don't tarry for it. We don't have to beat our head against the altar. 1 John 4, 15 says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him. God didn't use the Holy Ghost, didn't it? That's simple as it gets. Verse 37, John 7. In the last day, the great day of the feast. This was right before Jesus ascended. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. What did it say in 1 Corinthians 12, 13? We have all been made to drink into one spirit. 38, verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Then John said, but this spake he of the Spirit. See, he was saying that Jesus was talking about the Spirit when he said, out of, out of he that believeth on me, as the Scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And now, this was, this was prophecy that was being given for future because if you look at what the rest of John said there, he said, which they that believe on me, or no, I said it wrong, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Holy Ghost was not given yet 
during this time because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Okay, go to, go to chapter 17. John. I mean, I don't expect anybody to believe that just because I say I received a word of knowledge that that's the way it is. That's why I'm showing you these scriptures. But I, I, God woke me up in the middle of the night one night, and the only words that I heard, and I didn't hear this through my ears. I heard it in my spirit, but I heard it loud and clear. I mean, it was just as clear as anything I ever heard. He said it was the new covenant being fulfilled. And as soon as he told me these things, all these scriptures came to my mind to explain because I was having trouble figuring out why they had to tarry for the Holy Ghost that, back then. Okay, chapter 17. This is Jesus praying to the Father. Now, I believe, I don't want to get into this deep or nothing, but I believe that God has the ability to be God the Father, God the Son at the same time. Just like he has the ability to be in every one of us at the same time. There's only one God. So there can't be any other explanation to me that, you know, if you got a God to Father, if you got a Father and Son, and there's only one God, and, son, and Jesus is God too, then God has to be able to be God to Father and God to Son at the same time. That's the only thing that makes any sense to me. Okay. These words spake oh, Jesus no. and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may, be, may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth, and have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. See, he had to go, he had to first go to the Father, take his place at the throne to make intercession for us before the Holy Ghost was sent to reprove the world of sin. Go, go back to John 16, 7 here. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. He's talking to his disciples directly here. Sure. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. See, that was what happened the day of Pentecost. <coughs> the, the Spirit was not sent. Those, those men did not have the Holy Ghost. And then receive a higher infilling the day of Pentecost. It, if you look at Acts chapter 1, I'm not going to go through all this, but in verse 4 he said, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. In the next verse he said, which you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. See, he told them to wait for the promise of the Father, and then he told them they'd be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the same thing as receiving the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost there. Acts 1.8, he said, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the next verse, he was taken up into heaven. So they didn't have the Holy Ghost before the day of Pentecost, and then, then get filled with the Holy Ghost later. There is no scripture that tells where someone got part of Jesus, part of God, part of the Holy Ghost, and then the rest later. That's why it says in John 1, 16, and his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. So, grace and his fullness at the same time. This is why he, they had to wait the day of Pentecost because Jesus told them that he had to go away or the Comforter would not come, but if he departed he would send him unto them. Okay, I, I told you I was going to tell you, show you that uh, the Spirit was the living, was the drinking into the Spirit, was the, where it says in, in Revelations, whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely. Well, that was, that was in uh, John 7, what we was reading, that showed that the Spirit was that. Now, I'm going, I'm going to get off of this now, and I'm going to go, I just want, I wanted to point that out because... The children of God, they're, they're being, 
they got to know that that power is in them, you know, because we're not going to we're not going to get the victory over the devil if we don't understand that. You know, we have to know. And go to. Uh, I left my notes behind, so I don't remember where it's at. First Corinthians, <laughs> chapter six, I believe, is where it's at. I'm going to finish up here in this. Get busy on this skit. This is getting late, isn't it? That's not where it's at. Well, anyway. I'll have to go through my notes to find it now. Oh, it's Ephesians chapter 6. I'm oh, sorry about that. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, you got to know what the armor of God is when somebody tells you that or it's not going to do you any good. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, it says, Charity never fails. So, if love never fails then the whole armor of God is the love of God. That's, that's the only way to get the victory over the devil is to walk in perfect love and not give place to the devil. Okay? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Here, let's flip the page. <laughs> Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the day, evil day, and have done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking on the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I'll give a demonstration how we can do all that. We're going to do a little skit here. I got to do I don't want Satan over here by me. Put <laughs> yourself there for in the God. Who art thou? Break it over his head. Who art thou? I am the prince of this world. Who might thou be? I'm the son of the living God. I have fasted here for many days. If thou be a son of God, command this stone that it be, be made of bread. Command stone. It is written, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Look out unto all these kingdoms. All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all thou shalt shall be thine. Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Look here from the temple mount. If thou be a son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You've got to use the word on the same. Amen. Amen. Thou art not worthy of the Lord, for it, it is written, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Satan thou knowest the word well, 
and thou believest that Jesus is the Christ, but the word shall not profit you. For it is written, Faith worketh by love, and thou hast no love. Thou art to me sounding brass, or tinkling cymbal, because thou hast not charity, thou art none. I shall no more have dominion over my house than I. For I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Because I have set my love upon Him, He will deliver me. He will set me on high, because I have known His name. I will call upon Him, and He will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me with long life. Will he satisfy me and show me his salvation? Thou saidest well, thou art the prince of this world. I am of God and have overcome thee, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thou art an offense to me. Depart from me. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Depart from me, Satan. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah! My grandson's back here, Andy. Got called out. Come on up. There he is. Joe, you come door. up too. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Come up here, honey. Come up here. Come up here. Oh. Who else can we get? Brother Tony can help out. <laughs> on this. I mean, we're having fun, but I want us all to join together, one mind, one accord. We're going we're gonna to kick fear and doubt out of our life. Amen. Amen. We're going to take an elbow strike, and we're going to crash right through trials and tribulations. Amen. Amen. Sickness and disease, no disease we're going to smash it right in the mouth with the palm right. head strike. Right. We're going to break through all these things, and we're going to kick them out of our life. All right. Okay. <laughs> hold your fingers back. Like, like this. Now, hold your arms straight out. Lock them. Lock them. Dad, that lock your elbow straight out. Okay. Tilt it down just a little bit. There you go. Just like that. Okay. You come over here. Watch. You want to put a hand, one hand on top and one on the bottom, right in the center, right in the very center. Put this hand over a little bit. There you go. And kind of take your fingers and crunch them down so I don't hit them. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to hit your fingers. Okay, now you come right over Got here. Got another week to throw. I don't away. really have hardly enough room to do this, no. but you got to get on top and bottom too, just like that. Take your fingers and put them down. You can hold on to it, but I, don't, I hope I'm not that. <laughs> now you'll want to lock your arms out there and get solid. Well, I don't even hardly have enough room to do this. <laughs> I'm going to have to step back and get these weeks to come up room off right here. Everybody join in now. Believe we're going to pick out, we're going to pick out fear and doubt, trials and tribulations, sickness and disease are going to be out of our life. Oh. If, you, if you mess up, try again. I'm going to get it. 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 
been 25 years since I did this. Come on, walk your arms, there you go. Corinthians 10 13. There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able to bear, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. Amen. Amen. Hold it straight up. Okay. I'm going to try something here. I've never tried this. Yeah. I mess it up. Like I said, I'll just try again. So we can still get it right. That's what we have to do sometimes with God, you know. We can't give up just because we fail. We don't sure, keep going. Sure what this temptation? With temptation, you know, most of us, when we have time to think about it, we do the right thing, you know. Most most of the time, right. most of the time we do. But with temptation, it comes on. The devil's really sneaky about it. You know? he'll, he'll he'll use people to. To try yes. to get you to do things, and you, yeah. you don't want to say no, and, yes. and all that kind of thing. You know, you got to be able to really think fast. And I'm going to try this. This is like like a a cobra strike. What's a, co a cobra strike? What it's called. And in order to break this, you know, if you, with temptation, you have to be able to re react quickly. In order to break this from right here, I'm probably going to have to be faster than a yeah. cobra, and I'm. Almost 50 years old. We'll see. Wow! Death, hell, and the grave. That's the one that's left. Amen. That's the one we got. We got it. Hallelujah. Revelation 118 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Yes. And have the keys of hell and death. Oh, yes. Romans 8 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal life by his spirit that dwells in you. Where's my band at? Remember what we talked about, Brother Pat? Yeah. You know, you know, sometimes when we've been through a lot of battles, we got to get, we got to call our brothers and sisters to talk about, you know. We can't do it all sometimes. Sister Mandy, you come up here. <laughs> Bless Sister Mandy. I go over the pew. Second Chronicles fifteen seven says, "Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded." All your love when you do this. All your love, trust, trust Jesus, and do it. Amen. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you with this other board first how how you do. It. Yeah. I'm just like you do the other one up on top and on the bottom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how you do it first. With good and tight. You you take make your hands strong like the, the verse said. Let not your hands be weak. Make them make it real strong. Stand just like this. And turn this, turn this hand back as you come forward with this one. Stand, stand close enough that you got room to. Your hands should go back here. Right here is where you're, where you're aiming. Make your hands strong. You can do it. <laughs> right here. <laughs> 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 
right there on that line with the heel of your hand. Get real close. You can do it, baby. You can do it, Andy. Do all things with Christ who strengthens you. Put this hand out. Pull this hand back. Keep your hand tight. Your hand real tight. Get close. Come on, Andy. You can do it. Right on that line right there. Hold it tight. No. Amen. Straight through. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Sometimes we really believe what we're singing about. Because we've got the power. Amen. It's been given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just have to let it work through us. It's Amen. in us. And it will work if we'll let it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm going to put a here. It's good. 